Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I'm ready to do my full review on this bad boy. This is the Artisan Cutlery Arroyo, which is a Dirk Pinkerton design. And uh, in addition to that, I'm ready to kind of encapsulate what has gone on with my testing. Uh, if you've been following my progression with this knife, it's taken me a while. <laughs> I understand if people have lost track or, or don't even know what I'm talking about. But I've been doing some testing on this knife. This is an AR RPM9 steel, which is a new kind of proprietary steel for Artisan that they're throwing at a whole bunch of their knives. And so Kevin from Left EDC, who you will find a link down below um, in our group chat with me and him and Kyle from DTOM Knives and Gear, he, uh, he had the idea to get one of these and have it sent to me first so that I could kind of beat on it a little bit. I did an outdoor testing video um, which you can go back and watch where I did a whole bunch of chopping with this just chopping at logs very unsuccessfully because this is not a big chopper um, but just to like try to see if I could get the edge to roll or something um, I did a little bit of batoning I did some feather sticking and at the end of that it just it genuinely held up really well uh, so I was a little bit uh, confused actually how it did so well and so I set out to then come home and cut up a whole bunch of cardboard with it and just do a bunch of around the house stuff so I caught on film uh, my last session of using it for cardboard I had been just like making a point to cut up more cardboard than was reasonable to do so um, for the last week or so week and a half um, I also cut a few zip ties with it I did some cutting just like paracord on a board a little bit um, and just like tried to, if a cutting task presented itself and I didn't know what to reach for, I tried to make a point to reach for this. And then finally, um, the day before yesterday, I was doing a, a whole bunch of cardboard processing for the dumpster and I brought this and a couple other knives out with me to kind of test that I'm in the process of reviewing and I finally got to the limit of it. So I'll link to that footage or I'll, I'll switch over to that footage here. I'll probably speed up some of it and then I've got some remarks at the end. All right, so it definitely feels like I'm at a point where this edge still feels to my fingertip pretty okay, but for some reason it just seems to be binding a little more right here. It's kind of centered on the edge, I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'm just getting this spot where it's, it's becoming very difficult <laughs> to get it to cut. I'm having to kind of like sway back and forth through the material to get a reliable cut. See, if I do that, it's still working. But if I'm just pressing on that spot, let's see if it does it again. It seems to be sort of catching right there. And I can push through, but now it just feels more like I'm using, like, the fact that there's already a piece of metal going through this <laughs> more than the edge is, like, really cutting it well. So I think we're kind of finally here. Yeah, I wouldn't call that sharp anymore. I mean, it has an, a working edge on it. This will continue to cut for a while, but I think we're finally at the point where I'm about ready to throw this on the KME and, and sharpen it from here. So, we're back. <laughs> As you can see, um, I finally got to the point where this just, it, it wasn't like reliably cutting through the cardboard anymore. I probably should have, through this process, been like holding it up to some paper and seeing if it was cutting paper reliably. Um, but it just, I got to the point where like, even for a, a working edge, I was noticing it starting to diminish. And now, I don't know if you can see this, but there's this spot 
right here where the edge actually is deformed a little bit. I can see if I look closely at it, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's just a little bit of kind of rolling and chipping, honestly, right about in this spot. And so the goal was to get to the limit of the edge, be able to talk about what it took to get there, and then to try sharpening it. So I've got my KME here on the table. I'm gonna set that up in just a moment, hopefully in an angle where you can see it as well. And uh, I'm gonna put a fresh edge on that, on this before sending it to, I don't know whether it's going to Kyle on its way to Kevin or whether it's going to Kevin and then it'll go to Kyle, but <coughs> I think it's gonna be passed between the three of us. So, sorry, one second. I'm gonna take a sip of water. Oh, I've been talking too much. Um, anyway, before I put the fresh edge on it and get it ready to go to Kev, I figured I'll talk about the knife because I also review knives. <laughs> I should talk about how I felt about the knife and not just the steel. So I'll be pretty quick and concise with this, but I've been kind of impressed with this knife, not just the steel performance, which we'll talk a little bit more in depth about as well, but... Um, this knife has been pretty good. It's not amazing. And this knife isn't meant to be like super high end or anything, but there are some things that I definitely like about it. There are some things that aren't really my style, if I'm being totally honest. So in terms of the aesthetics of the design, I think it looks good. I have found the technical term for this is a trailing point. I feel like when I look at other knives that are trailing points, I see some kind of variance there. I was wrongly, I guess, calling this a clip point in my initial videos of it, but interesting looking blade. It's kind of a Persian style blade in the sense that it's very upswept. You've got this tip that's upswept and then it's a lot of belly. For me, that's the thing that like in actual cutting tasks that I do, like EDC type cutting stuff, that's the thing that for me just isn't my preference. I don't really like upswept blades. I just feel like I, I slip out of cuts a little more than I like to with them. If I've got a more like straight edge, it's easier for me if I'm cutting cardboard or something to kind of stay in the cut and not slip out of it on accident. This I just find I'm like slipping out sometimes, um, but it works I, and I, I understand for some cutting tasks, having a lot of belly is a good thing. I just think for my type of cutting tasks, less belly is generally a little more favorable. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's got a, a gnarly tip on it. That's for sure. This tip is no joke <laughs> and uh, it'll it'll pierce for sure. Although that's another thing with it being upswept. I feel like when I wanna like pierce into something, I wanna go straight or even because I carry a lot of like worn cliffs and stuff, my my inclination is to kind of go straight and down this it's a different profile you got to kind of like <laughs> i don't know i feel like a pirate with this thing like they're old scimitars that they would carry uh it's not really my favorite but it is a very pointy very appropriate tip <laughs> it'll it'll pierce for sure it almost feels like i want to do this with it <laughs> which is not probably the way you're supposed to do it um but yeah, so the blade is a, a unique shape for me. I just don't do the upswept thing very often, but it's it's been fine. Um, ergos for me on this knife have been generally pretty good. I did find in hard use that because these uh, scales are kind of like shadow boxed, if you can see, like you can see the liner protruding out from the edges of the micarta just a little bit, that it wasn't the most ergonomic for me if I was really bearing down on this knife. Like when I was feather sticking, I could really feel it. And uh, like pushing through a lot of cardboard, I'd start to feel it. I just feel the edges of this knife a little more than if it had scales that came all the way to the edge or even better if it had like nested liners, then I think it would be much more comfortable. But this micarta is really like a good grippy micarta. I really like the texture and the finishing on it. I think it looks great and feels great. I like that there's this groove all the way through it. If you can see that, it's like a, a divot that travels through the whole handle on both sides. Um, that feels really good. It gives me kind of a little bit more indexing to know where I'm at on the knife and, and where it's pointed. And, and it, I don't know, it adds to the grip, I guess, a little bit. I like that the jimping on here is not crazy at all it's like this weird if you can see the way the jimping is put in the the jimping like notches don't go all the way through there's like spine in the middle and they're just like little divots on either side of the blade um but it feels pretty nice it's not overly aggressive 
I feel that it's there. It, it's, it is jimped, but it's, it's less aggressive than a lot of others are. The only other jimping is really going to be, come on, back here. I feel like that's useless to me personally. I don't, I, I'd prefer this knife without that jimping. It's just like a little bit uncomfortable and I don't feel like it's really giving me much more grip. Although I guess the profile of this handle is fairly neutral. There's not really like a swell back here. So maybe it's just designed to keep you a little more locked in. I don't know how much it does, but that's probably the idea. Um, but yeah, ergos are pretty good. Cutting was fine. Um, the blade shape, again, not my preference, but like in terms of how the edge did, the geometry of how thin it is behind the edge was pretty good. Not crazy thin behind the edge, but thinner than I might have expected. Um, yeah, it did pretty well. So the other thing would be carry. Um, this is probably my favorite thing about the knife. This knife is really slim, like very slim this way, way thinner than I was expecting it to be before handling it. And Artisan is doing it right on the pocket clip. For my preference, they are crushing it. This pocket clip is a deep carry clip that comes all the way to the butt end of the knife, all the way. And uh, not only that, but if you look here, you'll see it's on the other side, it's drilled for it as well. This clip is set into the micarta and the screws are countersunk into it. That's my favorite way the pocket clips are done right now. There are a couple of players who are doing that. They're sinking the clip into the scale material and then they're sinking the screws down into the clip so that under there, it's perfectly flush. There's no like extra stuff sticking up to give you less room for your pocket to actually fit in there and it goes all the way in. Like it's just, this is bravo. This is what pocket clips should be in my opinion. For my preferences, this is perfect. Um, I don't think the pocket clip is like exceptionally wonderful looking, but I don't think it's bad looking either. I think this is a totally fine pocket clip and I like it a lot. Pair that with how thin it is. Um, the knife isn't like super lightweight, but it's not really heavy either. It is on the uh, show side. It's got four big holes drilled out in the liner, so it does relieve some of the weight. It, it's not like a featherweight knife, but it's pretty light. It's very slim, and it's got an excellent pocket clip. The uh, flipper tab, I haven't even really noticed in pocket because the whole thing, you'll see, like if this is in your pocket, this whole side is contouring inwards. So if you draw a straight line down, it's like the flipper tab really isn't protruding all that much because the knife curves that way. So reaching in for my wallet or whatever, no problems, carries quite well. Uh, the last thing is the action. And with the amount of chopping and kind of abuse I've put this knife through, I'm impressed that the action feels, I think, really the same as when it came out of the box. I don't notice any difference. Um, it's running on bearings and it's a flipper and it's fun to play with. It's not like the most fun ever, but this is a good action. I think these knives, I wanna say, I didn't buy it, Kevin bought it. I wanna say they're like 70 bucks, something like that. I could be wrong, <laughs> don't quote me on it, look it up for yourself. Um, but I feel like with where these, I remember it thinking it was pretty affordable for what it is, um, for being micarta, a decent steel, this construction on bearings, it's pretty good. I uh, I like this action. So yeah, um, I guess that's it kind of review wise. So let's recap the steel a little bit and then I'll go ahead and, and sharpen it up and uh, I might time lapse that as well, <laughs> depending on how long it takes, but we'll see. Maybe I'll just talk through it. Usually when I set up the KME and do a sharpening, I'll also like put a show or a movie on um, for audio purposes. I won't do that. Maybe I'll talk, but let's talk about the steel. So. AR RPM 9. I'm not a metallurgist. I'm not an expert in the properties of the steel or anything like that. I was expecting it honestly to perform uh, kind of like D2. And I'm not a steel tester, so I don't have like specific methods of how many feet of cardboard will it go through or how many cuts of twisted sysall rope will it go through. Like Cedric and Ada, Outpost 76, Tom Hosang Outdoors, um, Big Brown Bear, I think, does it, Michael Christie. A lot of those guys do steel testing and they're much more scientific about it. And they're much more knowledgeable about it. I just wanted to kind of feel this knife out so I could find out for myself and, and share the process how the steel did. In my opinion, compared to the knives that I've used in D2, um, both more expensive and less expensive than this, some of which were probably really well heat treated, others might not have been. If I try to like cumulatively in my mind, think of how D2 performs based on the experiences I've had with it, 
this held its edge in the outdoor use way better than D2 that I've used. Um, granted, there could be rooms, <laughs> there could be room for some uh, wacky stuff to happen in there. This was also very unscientific, but I, as I was using this, was impressed that it was going as far as it would. And then bringing it back home here, the amount of cardboard I put it through, the amount of just like cutting in general I did with it, it took longer than I was expecting it to, to get to where we're here and the edge has that spot that's binding. But even then, like, if, I guess it's kind of hard to do. I'm trying to keep it. Yeah, it's not really working. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's at the point now where it's, it's not reliably cutting paper, but it's still like, if I needed to go process a whole bunch of cardboard with this, I could still go process more cardboard. I just have to be doing a little bit more like rocking motion, right? And so I just, I, I, I'm a little bit impressed with how well it's done. This isn't like a super steel. If I had a knife in 20 CV and it did this amount of work and had edge deformation like this does already, I'd be disappointed in that 20 CV. But this I think has done better than like, I've got a, a Boker Lateralis in D2, which is a knife that I like and I find myself hard using a lot because it's a knife that like, if it got broken, I wouldn't care, right? I mean, I'd care, but it wouldn't ruin my day. Um, that knife in D2, I've had to sharpen a good few times when I've done less with it than I have with this. And so I just, yeah, I'm impressed with it. That's very unscientific, <laughs> but uh, hopefully that's illuminating in some way. It does make me um, excited about the fact that Artisan is using this steel quite a bit because I think that's a good thing. If I had that good of an experience with this steel and the price range of knives that they're offering it on, um, I think it's it's kind of like their budget-ish steel. It's probably even... I don't, I don't know. It might be even on some of their like CJRB models, which would be cool. I, I'd rather have it than more D2. There's way too much D2 out there. I don't really like D2 all that much. And it seems to kind of be the steel that like knife companies are throwing at budget options. Like, oh, but it's got D2. Like that doesn't make me more excited about it. Um, and so this, this does make me a little bit more excited. So I guess that's where I'm at with it for right now. And uh, we're going to go ahead and sharpen it up. So bear in mind, I'm not a professional sharpener. On my KME, I think I've done, I don't know, it's been a handful of sharpenings, less than 10 since I've owned the system. I have so many knives and I'm constantly always carrying different knives that I don't go through that many edges. I actually used to, prior to reviewing, go through more edges and I just had a Lansky that I was sharpen on at the time and wasn't that amazing on, but was decent at. So don't judge me if I make some mistakes as I'm using the KME here and now, but we're gonna go for it. So I'm gonna toss this on there and we're gonna see if I can put a fresh edge on it for Kev or Kyle, whoever's next. All right, let's swap around. All right, so um, just getting set up here. I have the knife. I just put my base kind of together. I've got this about ready to clamp the blade. Um, a little tip that a friend gave me not too long ago. This is a deer skin chamois. This is actual deer skin. <laughs> um, and a friend of mine who does quite a bit of sharpening, shout out to Jason Beatty. Um, he uh, let me know that this is a great way, oh, that was bad, to hold a knife in place on your sharpening system um, in the kind of clamps, if you will. That was a terrible cut, wasn't it? Hold on. Um, so I have used it now once or twice, and I agree. This is a fantastic way to hold the knife in place inside of the clamp, literally. So I'm gonna clamp onto the flat here. Um, this is probably even more than I need. Let me cut this again. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of this here. I'm gonna wrap it kind of around the spine so that the clamp is holding onto it uh, with the deer skin, which is gonna give it the amount of bite that it needs, frankly. And uh, get this in here on the right angle. So I'm gonna get a proper clamp uh, without 
chomping down too hard on the blade itself. Now one thing that I've been told when sharpening on a KME is the best way is to make sure that the kind of heel of your edge and the tip are a straight line that's parallel with the end of the jaw here. So if I were to draw a straight line between the heel and the tip, see I'm still not even there, this crazy upswept blade is gonna mess with me, but that should be it, yeah. So drawing a straight line there. Let's go ahead and tighten this all the way down. Get it nice and tight, especially since I've got the deer skin in there. Make sure that this doesn't have wiggle in it. Ooh, you can tell I'm a rookie. All right, that's tight. That feels good. So we're tight in there. I can rotate. Excellent. Let's make sure as well that I'm straight in the jaw. Looks good to me. All right, let's get our rod set up. rubber band on there to keep me from slamming too far in. All right, so that is ready-ish. I've got just the, the diamond hone stone, so I've got 140 grit, 300 grit, 600 grit, 1500 grit. If you're watching this video to learn how to sharpen, you've come to the wrong place. Watch somebody who's way better at sharpening than I am. Um, because I do have some actual, like a little bit of chipping and rolling here on the edge, I'm gonna start all the way down at 140 and kind of reprofile, if you will. So that's just what we're gonna start with here. I'm realizing now that I don't have a Sharpie next to me, but I do have some of my daughter's markers. So what I like to do is literally use a marker, Sharpie if you've got it, <laughs> um, to mark the edge of this blade. That way, as I start to pass my stone along it, if I see, um, I don't know why I'm giving you all these tips after I just told you I'm the wrong guy to watch, but <laughs> if I see that I'm not removing ink on a pass with the uh, stone, then I'm not on the right angle. It means I need to adjust so that I'm actually getting the whole edge and I'm not just skating across the top or the bottom of it because I just want to match this angle as best I can and uh, not necessarily completely reprofile. Right now I should be set, I think I'm at 18 degrees from the last sharpening that I did. I'm gonna find out what we're at on this edge. If I was really into sharpening, I'd probably have like a full on, oh, that is upside down in there. I'd probably have a uh, like, edge angle finder and all that stuff, but I don't. So, is what it is. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and see what we're looking at. Let me just give it one little test pass. Yeah, so from there, I'm just hitting the bottom of the edge and not the whole edge, which means my angle is a little too steep. So I need to reduce my angle ever so slightly. Let's see. So I'm at 18. We're gonna go to 17 on here. Let's see how that looks for us. Mm -hmm. That's cool. 
quite a bit better. We might still be a half a degree off. Yep, we're going to go half a degree more. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm removing all of the marker. Let's check the other side. Make sure we're also removing all of the marker over here. Mm. That's funny. So this one <laughs> seems like a steeper angle. So apparently on this side, I'd guess it's more like 18 maybe even 19 and then on this side it's like a 16 and a half which now that I'm looking at them this side the bevel is a little bit taller which makes sense so apparently I'm just gonna go ahead and reprofile this <laughs> and uh, I think what I'll do is I'll set it at a proper 17 degrees even and then I'll just get into a groove and remove some material here <laughs> and get it to where it's 17 degrees on both sides and I'm not going to match the factory edge if they're different on each side so we're going to take this to 17 degrees per side and get going so I'll probably speed this part up and we'll go from there all right so another thing that I have found in my own uh, stupidity. The way that I've positioned this on here. Oh man. Of course I've super tightened it. I need to pull this further. We're just gonna reclamp. I need to be further up the blade because I'm not able to get to the heel with where I've positioned it right now. So let's go. Here, I'm gonna switch to this piece. Make it a tad bit easier. moved the blade a little bit further back. Let's see if I can get to the heel from there now. Yep. Much better at least. All right. Now we're going to speed it back up. So I've reprofiled it, 140 grit made quick work of it, honestly. That was, I don't know, maybe five minutes of me working on it. And uh, I've got a totally new edge bevel here. It's nice and fairly even. I'm happy with it. Um, yeah, it looks frankly better than <laughs> the factory edge profile now that I'm becoming more acquainted with it. Um, 
So I'm going to go ahead and progress up to the 300 grit stone and just work my way up through this whole progression. Um, the way that this steel sharpens, I'm finding I'm able to move it pretty quickly and easily, which is nice. Um, my buddy Gerald, Outpost76 on YouTube, who does a lot of steel testing and a lot of sharpening, someone who you should pay attention to if you're trying to learn how to do it. Um, he, When he was sharpening this steel in one of his videos, was having a real tough time uh, with the like having the steel deburr so far I feel like it's I, I'm pretty consistent here I can feel a little bit of a burr down on that side we'll see how it moves back and forth um, as I progress through the stones but as of right now I'm ready to go ahead and move up so we're gonna swap to the old 300 grit Let's see how that does and uh, yeah, I'm impressed. That 140 grit really did a good job so far. That's a stone that, frankly, a lot of the time I, I'll start with the 300 grit on a lot of knives. Um, if I'm not trying to remove a lot of steel and I'm just trying to kind of bring back to life the existing edge profile that's on there. All right, so we're all set now with the 300. Let's go ahead and get it moving. Feeling pretty happy again so far. The 300 grit seemed to do its job quite well. So we're gonna go ahead and bump up to the 600. And uh, just keep on moving. I just wanna make sure my stone is <laughs> set nice and even every time. Because if your stone is off, then your angle's off. All right. satisfied with where we got on the 600 grit so now we go ahead and wipe down the edge another time get all that kind of dust off of there and then we're going to go ahead and finish up on the 1500 grit so I'll toss that one into here Final stone. So I think we should be pretty good. Let's see. All right. 
It feels better than it did before I put it on here. Let's pull it off and test a little. All right, get a whole bunch of shavings all over. All right. It feels like a pretty good edge to me. It's not like a perfect mirrored edge, but it's pretty nice. I'm all right with that. For me being kind of a noob. Let's see how it slices paper. Much better. Great. So, it's sharp again. <laughs> Let me go ahead and switch back to my face for a wrap up. All right, so, my hands are uh, kind of nasty. <laughs> Got ink and metal dust on me. AR RPM 9 dust. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with this. It's a pretty good edge. I would dare to say it's probably better than the factory edge was by a little. Um, so yeah, now this is ready to go on to whoever's gonna test it next. But uh, I'm pretty impressed with this. I, I think overall my testing, like I said already, has brought me to the conclusion that I think AR RPM 9 is a good thing for the range that they are putting it in. It's not meant to be a super steel competitor. This is no Maximet, it's no Rex 121, it's, uh, it's not 10V, you know, it's, it's not trying to be. But I think for the range that it's in, it makes a lot of sense. And for the range that Artisan plays in, I think it makes a lot of sense. And uh, I'm impressed with myself for this, <laughs> this edge that I put on. It's a, it's a pretty good edge. I'm liking that. So yeah, I, uh, I think the Arroyo is kind of a winner. I've seen a lot of people say some pretty positive things about this knife. I still need to clean it up because it's got tape residue all over it. So I'm gonna give it a good wipe down before it goes back to Kev or to Kyle. But uh, yeah, I, I think this knife probably appeals to a lot of people because of its upswept blade shape. And I think for me, that's the thing about this knife in particular that I'm just not crazy about. But it was fun to check it out. It was fun to do the steel testing. It's fun to do a little sharpening and uh, Again, sincerely, if you're looking for how to become a good sharpener, I'm not the guy. I just kind of do a, a, as good a job as this to get my knives to where they're, they're quite sharp. And uh, I mean, it's shaving hair, but this is not the nicest edge I've ever handled on a knife. This is, this is not jaw-droppingly good. This is just me being able to put an edge on my own knives kind of thing. So there are people who are much better at sharpening than I am, but it's fun to do. Um, and this was a fun experiment. So I apologize, it's kind of a long video, but actually don't apologize. I like making long videos, it can be a lot of fun. And you can fast forward if you don't like watching long videos or just skip them, balls in your court. But uh, this has been the Artisan Arroyo. Again, left EDC will be linked down below. This is his knife, he purchased it, just had it shipped to me. And uh, if you wanna follow along with the knife, then follow along on left EDC's channel because there's more to come on this guy as uh, it keeps getting tested and reviewed between the three of us, uh, three of us being Kevin, left EDC, Kyle, DTOM Knives and Gear, and myself. Anyway, thanks guys, appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.